So let's talk briefly about the properties of an ideal gas. We see here that there's four of them that we're really going to focus on, and that should make sense for us. If we're going to create a model to help describe something, hopefully that model can be described simply. The fact that we can do that on one slide in a PowerPoint presentation is exactly that. Now really, the first two properties kind of belong together. Really, they're both saying the same thing. There's no intermolecular forces between gas molecules in an ideal gas. What that means is we pretend that those molecules have no volume. They occupy no space themselves, which means that molecules could actually exist in the same place. Imagine an auditorium of 500 seats in a theater, and you've got 500 people potentially all sitting in the same chair, like ghosts. Well, that's what the molecules of an ideal gas are like. They behave as if they're the only one in the auditorium, and they can sit wherever they want because there's no one else getting in the way. The other aspect of that, the opposite thing, is there's no attractive intermolecular forces. Really, space or volume is a repulsive intermolecular force. You get too close to me as a molecule, I say, move away. I'm here, you cannot be here. Well, at the same time, we don't want any attractive intermolecular forces between molecules. No, come on and come and hang close to me and let's spend some time together. We're all whizzing about as ideal gas molecules doing our own thing, not affected one whit by what any other molecule is doing. So those are the first two properties of an ideal gas, no intermolecular forces. We also have to assume that the gas molecules are in constant random motion and collide elastically. This is very important. The constant random motion is important because if we had non-random motion, directionalized motion, well, that's wind, and that's not going to help us here. We also want to make sure that any collisions that happen with the wall, especially, are elastic. In other words, there's no net change in the total energy of the gas. Now, this molecule and this molecule can bang into each other, and they might change their speeds, changing their individual energies. This does not mean that the total energy after the collision has changed. We need this because if energy can change through collisions, well, then the state of the system is going to change, and that's not good for us. And the last property of an ideal gas is that the gas has achieved a state of equilibrium. In other words, any changes that have happened or want to happen have. And we've now hit that state of balance. We've distributed the energy of all those molecules uh, as widely as we are able to. Another way of saying this is the state variables are all constant. The number of moles can't change, the pressure can't change, the temperature can't change, and the volume can't change. In other words, we have a defined state that is not changing. With these four properties of an ideal gas, we can find out, especially once we get to kinetic molecular theory, that we can actually build up to the gas law behaviors from this very simple model. And this is why we start with this we can now build more complications in and better understand how those are going to change things for us later on.